Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Admiral Aldo, the controversial figure put in charge of the resistance evacuation of Dakar. The critics loved her and the fans mostly panned her as a politically charged character with very little to add to the franchise. Today I want to do an in-depth analysis of her actions as the commander of the resistance fleet. I admit I'm not a huge fan of Holdo, but because her actions have not affected my life personally, I feel like I can be pretty objective about this entire issue. So let's set the scene again. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys haven't seen The Last Jedi since it first came out in theaters. After Starkiller base destroyed the Hosnian system, the Resistance was able to trace the weapon's gigantic energy beam back to its source using a special reconnaissance pod piloted by Temin Wexley. The pod worked great, but the X-Wing that was supposed to carry the recon pod back was detected by the First Order, and its jump coordinates were traced back to the Resistance base on Dakar. We have their location. We tracked their reconnaissance ship to the Elenium system. Good. Then we will crush them once and for all. Prepare the weapon. Which is just terrible discipline by the Resistance pilot. As we all know by now, you should always make multiple jumps when you're trying to go back to your secret base. That way, no one can follow you. The Resistance, however, manages to Death Star Starkiller base, but nonetheless, the First Order still has coordinates for their secret base and sends their main armada to take them out. The First Order fleet manages to reach the Resistance place just as they are pulling out their last transports. The First Order has a Manator Siege Dreadnought, which has orbital cannons designed to penetrate even the most powerful planetary shields. Poe Dameron approaches the First Order fleet, trolls General Hugs, and manages to buy just enough time for the last Resistance transports to leave before the Dreadnought begins to open fire on the planet. Hux is a complete idiot for delaying long enough to allow this to happen. Satisfied that the transports all made it out, Leia orders Poe Dameron to withdraw his fighters and bombers and return to the Resistance fleet so that they can escape into hyperspace. Poe refuses to follow this direct order, something that even a paramilitary organization like the Resistance seriously frowns upon. Disengage now, Commander. That is an order. He cuts comms and proceeds to attack the Dreadnought. Prior to the battle, he had received schematics of the Siege Dreadnought, so he was probably pretty confident that the Resistance could destroy it. We brought you something, General. Schematics for the First Order Dreadnought. Transmitting it now. I'll get these over to Commander Dameron for analysis right away. Now, from a strategic point of view, Poe Dameron destroying the Star Dreadnought was probably the right decision. After all, the First Order had not yet deployed fighters. We need to scramble out fighters! Five bloody minutes ago. Again, General Hux is a complete idiot. And this gives the super slow resistance bombers enough time to get close to the Dreadnought. Had the Dreadnought not been destroyed, it would have been a huge headache for the Resistance in that long chase scene that makes up the rest of the film. Its orbital cannon was designed to shred through orbital shields, so it could have easily taken out any ship in the Resistance fleet, even at a long distance. Poe's actions do end up costing the entire Resistance's bomber fleet, which objectively speaking was still a pretty good trade-off. You're talking about eight really terribly designed ships versus one 8,000 meter long Dreadnought. The Resistance also lost several fighters and their pilots, including beloved talk show host James Corden. As a result, Poe receives a slap on the face and a demotion from General Princess Leia. If you ask me, he got off pretty lightly though. He should have been court-martialed and probably thrown into a jail. Even though his mission was success, he completely disobeyed the chain of command and, you know, discipline is everything when it comes to a military fighting force. But of course, the Resistance was desperate for manpower, and no one could command a fighter squadron better than Poe Dameron. After jumping out of the car system, the First Order, using a supercomputer, is able to track them. So shortly after reverting to real space, an even larger First Order fleet emerges behind the Resistance fleet. Although the Resistance ships are able to maintain their distance, a wing of TIE fighters managed to destroy the Radis' ship, taking out all the senior officers on board. Only Leia survives it by pulling off a Mary Poppins. But because she is in a coma, a new commanding officer officer needs to be chosen. The chain of command was quite cl clear as to who should take her place. Vice Admiral Holdo of the cruiser Ninka. Poe Dameron immediately approaches the Vice Admiral and tries to brief her on the situation. Commander Dameron, with our current fuel consumption, there's a very limited amount of time that we can stay out of range of those Star Destroyers. Very kind of you to make me aware. Some people might say that this is mansplaining, or Poe Dameron is challenging Admiral Holdo because she's a woman, but that's really the wrong way to look at this. First, this is Star Wars, an extremely advanced galactic-wide civilization. There is no racial discrimination amongst humans, 
because humanity is seen as one race, one of millions of sentient beings across the galaxy. Similarly, any gender inequality the writers try to project are just a weak attempt to inject current politics into the situation. Star Wars does reflect and mirror a lot of things from our own world, but certain issues just don't work. Women in the Star Wars galaxy are clearly equals and treated as such by their male counterparts. Let's not forget before Holda was in charge, Leia was Poe Dameron's mentor and leader, and the reason Poe disobeys Leia is not because she's a woman, or even because he doesn't respect her, it's because the Resistance is just an extremely undisciplined organization where people can come and go as they please and do whatever they want. It's basically controlled chaos. Anyway, that's my whole interpretation of this whole gender thing. I don't even think it's an issue in Star Wars because this is a society that is far more advanced than ours and probably would consider such inequalities extremely stupid and backwards. So instead of challenging Admiral Aldo, Poe is really just trying to figure out what is going on. Our plan, Captain? Not Commander, right? And in all fairness, he did just save the fleet, so at least in his view, he has every right to know what Holdo's plans are. But being the commanding officer of Vice, Holdo technically doesn't need to tell anyone anything. In most military organizations, information is given out on a need-to-know basis. It isn't based on rank or trust in an individual, but the commanding officer's judgment on whether a person is crucial to the success of a mission and whether information needs to be given to them in order for them to complete that mission. So from a command standpoint, I would say that Vice Admiral Holdo had every right not to tell Poe Dameron anything. But what about a leadership point of view? This is gonna be a little more abstract and not as set in stone. How would we evaluate Admiral Holdo as a leader? Now, a fearful leader will take a look at Poe Dameron and see him as a problem because, let's be honest guys, he is a problem. He's a loose cannon, he doesn't really listen to anyone, and clearly Leia has not disciplined him enough. The fearful leader would probably have locked up Poe Dameron for a court-martial at a later date. Right now, controlling him is the most important thing to do. Now, Poe might still carry out a mutiny, but it'll be a lot tougher for him to do behind bars. A good leader would recognize that Poe is a very valuable asset to the Resistance, despite being a loose cannon, and just needs a bit of guidance so that his goals can match the Resistance goals. The good leader realizes that even if she doesn't tell Poe what the plan is, he will eventually try to either figure it out himself or try to save the Resistance by himself. Poe Dameron does not simply just sit there and do nothing, it's against his very nature. Knowing this, the good leader could have taken a moment to sit down with Poe and explain what her plans are. This would put Poe at ease, and the pilot could even potentially help in some way to make their escape a smoother process. On the other hand, Holdo could have sat Poe down and just calmly explained to him what the situation is. There was a mole on board and all this information was on a need-to-know basis. I'm sure treated with respect, even Poe Dameron would know when to cool down. Communication is very important in any workplace. But what Admiral Holdo does is not something a fearful leader would have done or a good leader would have done, she did what a stupid leader would have done. She ignores Poe Dameron and not only refuses to tell Poe Dameron what is going on, she's even hostile to him and insults him to his face. I've dealt with plenty of trigger-happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive, dangerous, and the last thing we need right now. This is completely unprofessional and probably not a good way to start a relationship with one of your more important officers. There is a chance that Holdo is very pissed off that Poe Dameron got all the Star Fortress bombers destroyed. After all, they were originally docked on Holdo's cruiser, the Ninka. She probably had a personal attachment to them. No matter what her motivations are, Admiral Hodo does a terrible job trying to get Poe Dameron to trust her. Although she doesn't need to tell Poe what her plans are, she also doesn't really need to antagonize him for no reason. What results is when Finn and Rose come up with a relatively good plan and tells Poe Dameron, Poe, who realizes Admiral Hodo will never listen to him, decides to go off on his own and carry out this plan without her permission. Like we said, a good leader would have realized that Poe Dameron is the type of individual who won't just sit on his ass and do nothing. It's a better idea to gain his trust, that way you know exactly what he's up to. Now, the other problem with Holdo's plan is for those who weren't in on it, which was basically everyone, they would probably think that she was just randomly flying around the fleet and running out of fuel without a plan. It comes to no surprise that when Poe Dameron carries out a mutiny that several other officers are willing to join him. Now, the main reason Admiral Holdo has not told anyone her plans is because she suspects there's a mole on board, which is how the First Order has tracked him through hyperspace. But had Poe told Admiral Holdo what Finn and Rosa told him, she would have realized that the First Order has some new technology that is capable of tracking their fleet. 
But even so, having Mole on board is not a good reason for Holdo not to tell anyone her plans. For one, I think Poe Dameron, given his background and previous actions like destroying Starkiller Base, makes him clearly above suspicion as a mole. There's really no reason for her not to tell Poe besides the fact that she doesn't like him. Then there's the fact that Holdo's entire plan revolves around secretly evacuating all the members of the Resistance onto the planet of Krait as they fly by it. And when I mean all of the crew, I mean the potential First Order mole as well, which kind of makes the entire plan not work in the first place. Because if the mole is on one of those transports, he or she will tell the First Order about it. Admiral Holdo's plan doesn't work anyway because her group of transports is spotted soon after leaving the Mount Cala cruiser because DJ rats them out, not because of some First Order mole. It's just kind of an idiotic plan to begin with if you think about it. Admiral Holdo should have looked at alternative plans instead of just trusting in her own intuition. The First Order did pursue them for 18 straight hours after all, so she had plenty of time to listen to other people. It probably would have been a good idea for her to hold a meeting with the remaining officers. Plus, what was her plan once the Resistance arrived on Krait? It was pretty much a dead-end world. Without hyperdrives on their transports, they would have been stuck on the planet. And Leia and Luke had actually investigated the planet of Krait many years ago. They found out that the planet was incredibly hostile. There were giant worms beneath the surface with huge claws, along with salt storms that could last ridiculously long periods of time, trapping people on the planet indefinitely. So our conclusion is that Poe Dameron did a lot of things that would probably be considered illegal by most militaries, but he was a hero and had his heart in the right place. And Vice Admiral Aldo was fully in her right to not let anyone know what her plans were, but showcased terrible and foolish leadership. While Poe's rash and stupid behavior got several resistance pilots killed, it was also a very successful mission, and in war, while well, casualties are to be expected. Holdo's risky plan, on the other hand, almost wipes out the entire resistance, and ultimately was unnecessary. So guys, that is our analysis of Vice Admiral Hodo. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and please do try to be civil. There's no reason to bash women, because that'll just make your argument look very stupid and make you look like a bigot, and no one will pay attention to you. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.